He's just a happy boy. Star of the show. He's the star of the show. Do you look like the star of the show? Mm-hmm. Everybody says, Kyle, Hunter, where's your baby? We don't want to see y'all no more. Where's your baby? What you want to talk about? You want to tell me to get right here. You, I thought you had something to talk about. Yeah, I have a clickbait topic. Clickbait? All right. Mm -hmm. Is forward-facing sonar ruining bass fishing? Oh my goodness. Heavy topic. Is it ruining bass fishing? I'm going to say... No. It's ruining traditional bass fishing. It definitely is changing stuff. Like uh, <clears throat> the way that I like to fish, the way that I prefer to fish, the way that I qualified for the elites and fished for the first couple years, you can't do anymore. You know, like I had a couple, I mean, so far this year, I've had two tournaments where I had to not fish the way I wanted to fish because I had to scope, you know, and I did good in like Lake Fork. I came in 14th or 15th or 13th or something scoping and the first day I didn't scope but half the day the second third day I committed to it the whole entire time you know but it's like it's one of those things where you just got to commit to it and it's definitely changing you know like just say like a, the century belts on Lake Fork this year they were they would have happened without it like absolutely would not have happened without it so all the century belts from years past almost have less meaning to them now because you know now it's kind of like the the record the record books are being challenged so like the the old records that we have then it's not really fair to compete against them old records anymore you know if that makes sense it's like uh, you know it's just not the same everybody who gets a century belt with forward face and sonar it's just easier than it was without it so it's not really fair to compare the two. It's also like, you know, I guess to put it in other sports terms, it'd be like if they allowed aluminum bats in the major leagues and then they started breaking home run records and acting like it was the greatest thing ever. It's like, there's a reason why the home run records were what they were because that was as good as a person could possibly do with a bat <laughs> and syringes, I guess. <laughs> but, uh... Anyways, the uh, you know that's just kind of what what I feel like is the 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 old records and the and the history that was made is uh, well we need to figure out a way not to forget that and not to let that just be a thing of the past because that's what started it for all of us. But is it ruining bass fishing? I don't think so. I don't think it's ruining it. I do think it's changing it. It's not the same type of bass fishing that I grew up doing. But it's uh you know if the future of the sport wants to scope if that's what all the kids want to do nowadays is scope maybe that's what we need to do we need to just embrace it if that's not what they want to do if it's hurting viewership maybe we need to regulate it maybe we need to do something about it it's 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 a hard hard thing to decide on what do you think link scope or not kick off if you think not <laughs> he said no didn't he kick off if you think yes scope. do you think it's hurting sponsorships Oh, yeah, definitely hurt sponsorship. Yeah. Live scope is going to make it where nobody gets paid as much money anymore for sponsors. 100% going to do that because the turnover rate's going to be higher. You know, nowadays, you know, KVD was KVD because KVD smashed them. Everybody thought KVD was absolutely magical. Now, it doesn't matter how good you are. People think that Sonor up there is the magic producer. They, that produces the magic. You don't. And me being a professional angler and being around it, I know there's some people that are absolutely better with it than other people. There's people that are just better fishermen. And when they use that, they're going to catch more. When they don't use that, they're still going to catch more because they're better fishermen. But I feel like the general public and the perception is that that box right there is magic. And the person is not magic. And if that makes sense, you know, that was kind of, that's been different. You know, whenever, whenever Wheeler was winning a lot, it was like he was magic. Well, now it's still got to the point where he's winning with that and he's not like he's magic anymore. I just feel like you're not building the personality types and the brands 
that you were before because there's a focal point of people to look at and say, look, he's good with scope. You know, like he's using the scope. The scope showed him everything. I don't really think that's the case. I don't really believe that personally, but I feel like that's the perception. And I feel like it's going to hurt hurt people being, you know, the, the brand that they could have possibly been. But uh, I don't know. For me, last year, I won AOI. I used it some. I didn't use it some, you know. I mean, it was... To me, it's a tool you got to use every once in a while. But if they if they regulated it or banned it, I'd be fine. I'd be happy either way. I just like fish. There's nothing that could happen that'll make me quit fishing the Bassmaster Elites. Like, if they say you have to use it every single tournament, I'm still gonna fish the Elites. If they say you don't, you cannot use it, I'm still gonna fish the Elites. I love bass fishing more than all this other stuff, you know. So like, for me. I'm not one of those ones that's like, if they don't stop, if they don't ban it, I'm going to quit. I'm not going to quit, no matter what. So, you know, just wanted to say that. But it's uh, it's kind of one of the things where everybody's opinion is different. If it's not hurting viewership for the leagues and it's not negatively impacting the sport, it's going to be hard to ban. It's going to be really hard to ban, you know, so that's kind of what I think. Do you think it's hurting sales of like top waters? Oh, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Big time. Yeah. Deep diving crankbaits. I mean, the only hard bait that probably sells nowadays is a jerk bait that sells like it used to. You know, like square bills probably sell super short periods of time. Jerk baits sell, but like uh, soft plastics are the deal. Like, I'm sponsored by Crust City, Rapala. I guarantee you that Crust City is killing it right now because they have some of the best forward-facing sonar baits on the market. I mean, w without a doubt, two of the absolute best forward-facing sonar baits on the market. And then Rapala has a Maverick jerkbait now, which is a phenomenal jerkbait for forward-facing sonar. But, like, I bet the DT6 sales are down from the past, you know? But I bet the freeloader sales are up so much that it makes up for it. But other brands that don't have a freeloader, you know, they don't have a bait that's as good as the freeloader for forward-facing sonar, they're just taking the, the loss on hard baits and not being able to pick it up on soft baits like Crust City is. Because, I mean, the freeloader is a phenomenal bait. It sells like crazy because it catches them like crazy, you know? So that's kind of one of those things where, you know, if a, if a company doesn't have a forward-facing sonar bait that's really, really good and drives sales, they're losing out on sales. And then that company can't afford to sponsor anglers anymore, you know? And that's just kind of one of those things that is going to hurt long-term because that company can't afford to sponsor anglers. It's going to get down to where... I mean, I can think of on top of my head, head, off the top of my head right now, there's like four baits that people buy for forward facing sonar. Literally, four. Every single pro has four. That's it, you know? And I mean, I can name them, but I mean, they're, there's four baits. That's what everybody has. And then a couple different jig heads with different size hooks and different weights, and that's all. So, I mean, that's all it's selling. So, th those four brands are doing extremely well. But outside of that, nobody is. And Pro City, luckily, it has two two baits that, that are in that. You know, Strike King has a good bait. Z-Man has a really good bait. There's a Japanese bait that's extremely popular. And then there's literally those three, and then there's Crest City with the Freeloader and the Mooch Minnow. So, I mean, that's uh, basically it. And that's unfortunate for the industry, but it's pretty fortunate for Crest City. Luckily... They're a, you know, sponsor of mine, so. What tell do you us, think? Tell us about Florida. Florida was a, uh, one of them things where I didn't ever find, like, the super deal. What is it, buddy? I didn't ever find, like, the super deal in Florida, but it was, I had the bites on Harris Chain to do well. I, I don't, y'all know my YouTube, I don't talk about lost fish, but I had the bites on Harris Chain to do well. Had the bites on St. John's to do even better than I did, you know, but that's just one of them things that happens. I, I, you know, didn't land them all and didn't make, didn't fish perfectly. You know, like John Garrett on Harris Chain, if he would have lost the bites that I lost, he still would have came in the top five, you know? So like losing fish is not that big of a an excuse because it's, it's my fault that I'm depending on those three pound bites that much, you know? Like I should have found something better where I could lose three or four fish and still get a get a you know make the cut and that's just kind of one of those things where i didn't find nothing good enough i just didn't get on the right deal 
I kind of just found enough to where if everything went right, I could come in like 30th, and that's not a good plan. Like that's not a good plan at all, but that's all that's what I found. And I found one thing that was very, very risky, and I decided not to do it. And I kind of regret that. I really wish I would have took the risk and made the long run and went over there and fished, but uh I, I didn't, you know, and that's just kind of one of them things where it's a decision you make and a decision you live with. But Harris Chain was a struggle. Um, we got close to making the cut weight-wise, definitely had the bites. And then uh, St. John's easily made the cut, you know, but uh, day, day three had the bites for a really good bag and ended up not, not catching them. So it's whatever, you know, Florida was, this year's just kind of been kind of a, a struggle. We got Murray next. I'm going to put in a lot of time for that and try to try to do really good because I need a top 10 or at least a top 15 or so to put me in better point standings to make the Classic because right now we're kind of, we're just on kind of the bubble. We're, we're outside the Classic cut right now, but like points wise, we're not far out at all. Like literally a 30th place finish in the next one and I'm inside the Classic cut by a lot, you know, but it's just one of the things where I need to make up some points on that Classic cut line because you want to be at the Classic every single year and that's what, that's my biggest goal right now is Get in there and qualify for the classic. So hopefully Murray, we can top ten, and uh, you know just have fun. It's fun whenever you're top ten. Mm. What's he doing? I don't know. He's trying to walk. What do you think? About what? All that stuff he's asking. I think it's boring to watch. Boring to watch? Mm -hmm. Okay, what else? Should they ban it? Yep. Dang! Hunter's making a stand. You think straight up ban it? Tired of seeing that crap? I think winning off it's not respectable. You know, growing up, there was always an asterisk for me around the offshore guys. You know, like, like <clears throat> I'd go to Lake Eufaula, right? And, like, a guy would win shallow. Usually it was somebody I knew. And I'd be like, dang, you freaking smashed on, you know? But then you'd see some of the locals that, like, caught him out of brush. And like to me, it never it never was impressive, you know. <laughs> it was kind of one of the things where I was like, "Well, he caught him offshore," you know. That's just kind of how, that's how I felt growing up because it's like, yeah, he put out brush piles, he caught him offshore, it's whatever. But like this dude smashed him on the bank. I'd be like, "God, that's freaking awesome!" Same thing on West Point, and guys would go throw a Carolina rig and they catch, you know, two three pound spots and two tiny spots and a seven pounder and have like sixteen pounds of win. And I'd be like, "Yeah, but whatever." That's how I feel. I've never felt it was like that impressive to catch them offshore either. Very difficult to find them. It's hard to find them, you know, but like to me in my heart, that just don't get me like, God, he smashed, you know what I'm saying? I never felt like that. You know, you fire up a school in Tennessee River and you catch them cranking, like I don't even want to watch it. Never have. Don't like it. Like it's not, to me, it's not fun to do. It's not fun to watch. Do you feel like you smashed them on Ontario? Yeah, I smashed them, but I don't want to watch it. Like, yeah, it's fun to catch them, but it ain't fun to watch it. Like, uh, yeah, I had 20-something pounds a day, but, like, it wasn't, you know, whatever. Well, Kyle's fishing a Tuesday night. Are you going to win? I, don't, I ain't been. I mean, I ain't been to this lake in three weeks, you know, and it moves fast. So, maybe we're going to try Hopefully. See what's going on. We're going to take a little link with us, see if we get some good luck, some baby luck. Baby luck in the Tuesday Nighter Link. We're going to go. We're going to go catch them. We're going to go smash them. We need a fish as big as you.